bro there's a uh um and i don't know if i could name the, the church i don't know i don't know the legalities yet uh-huh. but i want to <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's a big church i think you know who i'm talking about uh-huh. in town uh-huh where I was just watching one of his videos, and he pretty much said that Jesus didn't die for your sins. Oof. Bro, should we Oof. watch it? Yeah, dude, put it on. You got it? There it is. Put him on blast, bro. It's not what I want. It just... Well, you know what? Let, let's let's verify if this is even true. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because that's the claim. Yeah. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. So that's what we're doing here. We're not trying to put him on blast, but let's try to help him out here. Unless it's teaching false, then I'll blast him off. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> we are all sinners. We're all sinners. So I, not if you've heard some good stuff. We're all sinners. Our sin separates us from God. Have you heard that? We deserve eternal condemnation because of our sin. Jesus became a human sacrifice, atoning for our sin. Jesus took the penalty of our failure, torment, death, and condemnation. Now, that is a very normal presentation of Jesus as an atoning sacrifice to cover our guilt. Here's the problem. (laughs) Wait, what? It is Old Testament thinking that is nothing short of human sacrifice. Is Jesus a human sacrifice a human being shedding his blood so that God would be happy with us. Are, can we pause and, and think about that? Now, some of us were raised in this from the time we were little baby ninos. And so this is just no, a normal way of thinking for us. And a normal way of thinking is that Jesus was a human sacrifice, that God sent his only son to be a human sacrifice to cover our guilt. Here's the problem with that. Throughout the scripture, human sacrifice is considered to be an abomination. It is considered to be one of the most horrific evils ever perpetrated on earth. Here is Leviticus 18.21. God is screaming this. Do not permit any of your children to be offered as a sacrifice to Molech. This is for pagan gods, and these are for brutally barbaric people. I mean, brutally barbaric, who take their own children and slaughter them for the appeasement of of a God. Do not ever let this happen among you. On Texas King. You must not bring shame upon the name of the Lord your God. Human sacrifice was so detestable to God that the place that it actually happened, the Valley of Hinnom, which you can go to right now, is then became called hell. That is how serious God is against human sacrifice. So are we actually saying that God gave his son as a human sacrifice? The very thing he called evil? The very thing. All right, hold up, hold up, hold up. So what he's trying to say, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that he's equating Jesus' sacrifice as a human sacrifice to Leviticus, was it Leviticus... I don't remember what he 11 said. 11, yeah. maybe you could look it up real quick. Um, that human sacrifice to Molech. Molech or gods was an abomination. Yeah. So what he's saying is that the sacrifice of Jesus in the same way is not, help me out here, is so not good? It's, it's I'm <laughs> genuinely asking. It, it, from what it sounded like to me is he was saying that Jesus's death on the cross is not to be celebrated because he's equating it to human sacrifice to Molech. That is the craziest thing. That that's I think that's like top of the list craziest thing I've ever heard a pastor say. <laughs> no joke. Wait, I don't think he's he's saying that Jesus was sacrificed to Molech, though. No, 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 no. That's not what he's saying. Right. No, no. But what I'm saying is to equate Jesus' death, his sacrifice, to sacrificing a human to Molech, to equate those two things, 
is literally the craziest thing I've ever heard a pastor say. Yes. Let's keep giving him the benefit of doubt. I don't want to anymore. No, no, no. no, no, no. We, we have to <laughs> okay, be fair. Okay, we have okay, to be okay. fair. Okay. Let's. <laughs> you let, know me, bro. I'm no, gonna... I know. And, and let, let's see what, because that's what it okay. sounds like. He see. called a shame, the very thing he called an abomination, the very thing that is now called hell itself. It's a huge burden to carry. A huge burden for us to carry that we are so evil that God had to to push forward a human sacrifice, his only son, so to evil. pay for our failures, to atone for it. Here's how the message goes, and you've, you've seen this, right? I'm a sinner so full of guilt that I caused God to give his only son as a human sacrifice. God did the very thing he declared evil because of me. So God did evil. A lot of us are carrying that. We teach our kids that at a very, very young age. It goes something like this. Let's take a five-year-old in Sunday school. All right, little five-year-old right here. Five-year-olds are what, about that? About that, about that tall? All right, here's how this message goes, right? Five-year-old, little sinner five-year-old. You are sinful by nature and you do and the very, very bad it, things. Though, dis- the way he says it though, like, oh, little sinner. Yeah. Like it's a mockery. It's almost like a mockery. Like I don't talk to my kids like that. No. I have a five year old and I have a seven year old. And it, it's it's not in a they know that we sin, but it's not con- condemning. No. Like it, it pushes them more to Christ. Yeah. Dude, they, dude, my, my Emma and Joy, they know the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Your kids do too. My kids know the gospel. And Salem's a 12 year old preacher. Yeah, for, you know, oh, yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. And it, it, just the way how he's presenting that, it adds a connotation. I mean, we don't know his heart. It seems like he's, he's done with this whole. It's almost deconstruction. It, it very, it's very close. Right. Right. And, and another issue that, um, and again, I don't know the guy's heart. I don't know him personally. Yeah. Yeah, uh, me either. But what I can say is when he said that God has done evil, the very thing that he's called evil, that implies something. God cannot do evil. God is good by nature. Right? Amen. So whatever God does, he is, is the good. standard of good. Whatever God does is good. Yeah. Right. We, we recently talked about that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, so to hear him say that God did evil, it actually, it's a very, a very blasphemous thing. Well, I, I don't think that's what he's saying. What he's saying is that that's what we're saying. Or other people are saying. I, I understand. But what I'm saying is, for him for that to even leave his mouth and not in the context of so one well, false here follow me real quick because i don't think he's saying that mm-hmm. and he's under the impression that that's what everybody else has been saying for the past thousands of years gotcha does that make sense yeah 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 and that's the misconception on his end yeah so that, he thinks that we're teaching that god's done or that, that we're teaching that God has done some evil. Yes. Gotcha. So it's bad theology, yeah. bad doctrine. Yeah. Let, let, let's, it's a straw man. Yes. It's a straw man. For sure. It is. Let, let's, let's keep going. Let's see what he says here with this five-year-old. <laughs> My God, and you deserve condemnation. Your sins separate you from God. And as a result, his back is turned towards you. And in your sin, wrath the wrath of God is coming upon you. But God sent his only son, Jesus, to be a sacrifice for your sin. Your sin cost the blood of Jesus Christ, the son of God. That's the message. That's the message we teach to kids this big. That is a message we teach. But what's so bad? <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because he left out that God loves you. Yeah. Loves you, little yeah. little five year old sinner. 
He left out that that no one could took, take Jesus's life, but he gave it freely. Yeah, he left all that. Like, obviously, we're not going to just tell our kids that you're a horrible little five year old kid. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, bro, he's such a good communicator too. Yeah. He's such a good communicator, yes. and obviously, we're not going to do that. Yeah. Like, he's uh, he's there's it seems as there's some kind of hurt on his end, yeah. and that kind of led to some kind of false doctrine and theology yeah. you know yes i tell my kids we're all sinners yeah in fact you know what um emma recently asked me that if jesus died on the cross for our sins why do we still sin yeah right well, yeah. Well, why do we still mess up why do we still lie i mean that's such a good question war <laughs> <laughs> so i explained to her yeah. well there's the flesh yeah. and there's the spirit we need to rely on the Holy Spirit. And then we, we, there's that song, I forget how it goes. Read your Bible, read every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you have to be reading the word. We have yeah. to be praying to the to the Lord, and, and he's going to strengthen you to not sin as much. Yeah. We're never going to be perfect until we go to heaven. That, that, that's the whole concept of heaven. Guess what? But why did Jesus die on the cross for our sins? So we could go to heaven. Yeah. First John five thirteen, right? All this has been given. All this has been written so that you may know you have eternal life. Amen. It's a fact that we're going to go to heaven, yeah. not because of we're so good, no. but because of the work of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. So these are the things that we explain to them, to little kids. Hey, you know, we're going to go to heaven, and that's when we're going to be perfect. Yeah, yeah. And the sin's going to be gone away. Their tears are going to go away. Dead, no more death. And then she gets so excited. Yeah. So according to God and according to Scripture. To let your kids know, not to, to sit them down and say, hey, come here, little sinner, but to inform your child that they are born in, in, in iniquity, that, they're, that they are a sinner, but they've been redeemed by the blood of Christ. According to Scripture, that's the most loving thing you could ever say yes. to your child. Hey, there's redemption. You know all the things you're struggling with on the inside? All the little, uh, the anger the jealousy, all the little things inside that you know are not good because that little voice is telling you it's bad. Yeah, remember the time it, you stole my cookies? <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted them cookies. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ has come. He's died on the cross, but he didn't stay there. It's not just his death. Yeah, like... He resurrected three days later. Yeah, like, where was all that in his, in his speech? Yeah, that's... that's uh, you know, again, I think there's some bad theology, and uh, I'm probably a little bit. I'm probably, you know, I'll, I'll go to war a little bit over it. But well, we, we got to give him the <laughs> we got we got to give him the benefit of the doubt, you know, because we don't know him personally. Yeah, we don't go to his church. No, I've just heard about some. We heard, and, and and I think me personally, bro, yeah. I think it's wise to always not come to a situation with a preconceived notion already made your mind up. Yeah. I understand. Don't it? it's, it's in my, bo my back pocket. I'm ready to pull it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's just see. Yeah. Actually, there's, I forget where in Joshua um, it talks about that. It, it talks about the 12 tribes um, being divided, right, by the river. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there was word that got to the 10 tribes that, the, the two tribes on the other side. They wanted to stay on that side, yeah. That, that they built an altar to God. And uh, the ten tribes got together and said, we need to go kill those fools because <laughs> they put another altar in the land <laughs> and that's going to disgrace God and then God's going to come against all of us. So they mm -hmm. go down and I think it's Benjamin and uh, Manasseh, right? I believe it is. I, I forget, yeah. On the far side, whatever it is. But, um, but they get there and they're like, hey, did you build an altar to God? And they're like, yeah, but... This isn't like the altar. To, we got to go over to, to worship in the same place as you. We just built a, a rock of a remembrance uh, in our town. Yeah, I remember now. I remember right? now. Yeah, yeah, and it was all based upon yeah. just just the word, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to be careful not to jump to conclusions. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to do with and, this guy. And go and murder some fools on the other side of the river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Should we keep listening? Yeah. Let's see what he says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm interested. You know what that does? 
lot of you know what it does because you've lived that life. You've lived with the burden of thinking, I am a sinner. That's my identity. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. God has turned his back on me. God is angry with me. Again, God is disappointed with me. And the gospel. very wrath of God, I deserve, including eternal condemnation. And we hear this and we grow up with this. And, and my sin uh, is what caused God to send his son as a human sacrifice. Again, I don't feel burdened no. because the Lord has taken that burden off yeah. through his sacrifice. <laughs> I don't understand that part, but I, I wanted him to, to elaborate on the part where he says that, that the sacrifice was an abomination. Like I, I want to understand his logic behind it. I, want I think come, he's getting there. Yeah. Yeah. I want him to come to the conclusion, but I agree. Uh, you know, listening to him right here, um, there's a missing piece. Yeah. You know, it's, it's almost like he's just teaching a small portion. Well, cause he, here's the thing, bro. Here's the thing. Oh dude, I wasn't catching you. And we were talking my bad. That's okay. Here's the thing. There are preachers that are like that. Yeah. Yeah. L let's try to give them the benefit of the doubt. There are preachers who just turn and burn. Yeah. 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 Hellfire and brimstone. Hellfire and brimstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's all that comes out of their mouth. Fear yeah. tactics. Yeah. And they put that burden on their congregation. Yeah. You got to do this. You have to do that. No, no, no. You don't have to. It's a get to. Yeah. You get to go to church. I said that in my sermon. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You get to worship. You get to have a relationship with God. Amen. So maybe he's kind of talking about those people. Yeah. Westboro Baptist type. <laughs> the 10 people left. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny. I, um, I've had this conversation several times with different people. Um, your relationship with God, it's, it, there's a difference between having um, a relationship where you fear God Mm. only wow right and uh because that's the beginning of wisdom and the beginning of knowledge the fear of god that's not bad amen that's the beginning but there's a difference between just having the fear of god and then being a son of god mm. and you know i always equate it to my son salem when i get home from work and uh, i walk in and the trash is taken out and he brings it out to the trash can outside and then I go outside and I find him rolling the trash cans out to the curb. And I didn't even say anything, right? And I go, bro, what? why are you doing this? And he's like, what? You know, I didn't want you to do it. I love you. Oh. You know, there's a rule. He is supposed to take out the trash. But... I don't have to impose. His heart, his heart behind that rule? I don't have to impose a rule. Yeah. It's already being done. It's already, why? Because of his love for his father. Mm. You know, the fear is the beginning, but love is the finish. Amen. And, and I want to do these things because I love my father in heaven. Amen. You know, I, um, one of the things I often bring up to the high schoolers, or when it comes up, is, you know, sometimes you run into people, well, why doesn't God show himself right now? Prove that God is real. Why, why doesn't, if God is real, why, why doesn't God just um, reveal himself to everybody? Yeah. He could. Yeah. And, and by the way, he did it through Jesus, but, and he will, this, his second coming, bro, he's gonna come with, <laughs> he's gonna come with, with fiery eyes and it's gonna be scary. But here's the thing, God could reveal himself to everybody. Yeah standing 30 feet, feet tall yeah. looking like Thor with electricity just yeah. surging through his body and just chiseled looking like God what we think he could everyone's gonna bow down to him yeah that will happen yeah, that will happen but here's the thing it could happen let's just say it could happen hypothetically yeah answering to that question why doesn't God just reveal himself why doesn't he do that right he could do that and re re present himself in that way like in, 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 in Exodus chapter 20 or 19 with the mountain and thunder and and he could present himself with a powerful yeah. presentation and everyone's going to bow down. Oh, if he's real, then hell is real. Yeah. And now you're bowing down out of fear. Out of fear. And that's not what God wants. Yeah. We're to walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. And, and the Bible's clear. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the apostle Paul says, Verse 11, I think, or verse 14. Yeah, 514. 2 Corinthians 514, Paul says, it is the love of God that compels me. Yeah. 
it's the love of God that controls me in the NASB. At the end of the day, it's uh, it's with all because of love. Amen. And um, in in First Corinthians thirteen, the Apostle Paul, in the context dealing with spiritual gifts, 12, 13, 14, because the Corinthians were divisive over it, they were overly emphasizing on these certain gifts and, oh, I'm, I'm more spiritual than you. Yeah. Um, he says, without love, you're nothing. You're clanging symbols. You're clanging symbols. Yeah. But you know what I like about that portion of Scripture, chapter 13? He says that faith will cease. Prophecy will cease. Yeah. There's going to be a point in time where we step in, when we, when we step into eternity, we're not going to need faith. Yeah. We're not going to need hope. That's, yeah. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, love never ends. Yeah. Love never fails. Yeah. The only thing that we're going to take from this life to the next life is the love of God. Amen. Our relationship with God. Amen. So I don't know what this guy is talking about, that we're just that people are just preaching. It doesn't matter. They, they are, there are those who are preaching that kind of thing, that kind of bondage and just a heavy trip and legalism and, and the law. Yeah. But that's not everybody. And, and, and but that's what I'm saying. You it's want to, really the minority. And, and yeah. that's why I personally, and I know you're the same way, but I like teaching verse by verse through the scripture. Amen. Hallelujah. Because then, then you get the full the, counsel the, of God. The full counsel of God. Exactly. It's just so much easier preach that way yeah and then it's not on us to come exactly. up with some like you know fancy dancy message you're just teaching what god you know simply teach the the word simply it's, mm. it's that easy amen yeah but let's, let's yeah uh, let's finish this up and see this does two things it traps us in permanent guilt fearing judgment for our sin because it hard defines us as sinners and hard defines God as this vengeful, wrathful, angry being who must have his bloodthirsty, you know, consequence of sin be satisfied. So either you're going to eternal hell or my son's going to be a human sacrifice. He's like, he's enraged at the sin. Somebody's got to pay. So it permanently causes guilt, fearing God's judgment for our sin, or just as bad, permanent self-righteousness, judging others for their sin. Take your choice. That's what this message does. That's all it does. Either traps people in permanent guilt or traps people in self-righteous judgment. That's the fruit of considering sacrifice and atonement for guilt. What if God never wanted that sacrifice in the beginning? What if God never wanted sacrifice? What if God never wanted the grains? And what if God never wanted the money? And what if God never wanted the animals? In the first place, what if that whole system was broken from the beginning? That's what the Bible says. The Bible says God never wanted it in the first place. He never wanted the whole system. Psalm 51, 16 through 17. Oh God, you do not desire a sacrifice or I would offer one. You do not want a burnt offering. The sacrifice you desire is a contrite and humble heart. God's always been about the heart. He's always been about the relationship. He's always been about, you know, guiding us to a good life and a better life and a kind life and a loving life in relationship with God, our father, not feeling, oh, we're separate and we're condemned and, and we need blood in order to, to get us close to God. He says, I didn't want the whole system to begin with. Jeremiah 7, 21. This is what the Lord says. And I love this passage. Here's what God says. Take your burnt offerings and your other sacrifices and eat it. Just eat it. When I led your ancestors out of Egypt, it was not burnt offerings and sacrifices I wanted from them. God says I never wanted the whole thing in the first place. Like you're wasting your time. It's all about the heart. It's all about relationship. It's all about you really you know, accepting my love, embracing my love, and leaving a life of love, right? God says... Let's pause it right there. So Jesus wasn't crucified from the foundations of the earth. That's what the Bible says. Oh, oh. What was that in funny. Hebrews? Where's that at? Or 1 John? Uh, yeah, I think it's 1 John. Yeah. Let me look at it. I have to look it up. I want to break that Jeremiah scripture down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What was it? Jeremiah what? Uh, 7, verse 22. You, you find that. I'll go look for it. Uh, Revelations chapter 13, verse 8. It says, All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. There it is. Lamb slain from the foundations of the world. Like he, that's what was supposed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> did, did it just got destroyed uh, with that one verse. Uh, what about, what about uh, Genesis uh, chapter three, where the Lord tells Satan that there will be enmity between him and the woman, but the seed of the woman will crush his head and he'll bruise his heel. 
from the fa- from from literally chapter three of Genesis, the beginning of the Bible. We see the salvation. Well, I think his his big thing is the concept of sacrifice. You know, actually, my I have a couple of relatives uh-huh. that they let's talk about this sacrifice thing. Okay, because as I'm remembering, my grandma and a couple of the relatives they have a big issue in that. Why would God sacrifice His own son? Mm-hmm. Why would God sacrifice human for human? Yeah, or sacrifice animals. That's not a loving God. But that comes from Genesis chapter 3. He did it for the covering of humanity. So in Genesis chapter 3... Here, let's, we, go. Let, let, let's, let's go. Let's go to the Bible. Okay. Genesis chapter 3. 3.15. It doesn't really talk about sacrifice there. Yeah, well, it does, though. The, the, the crushing of the head and the bruising of the heel is a, a picture of harm that will come to the seed of the woman. Okay. So it is speaking of, I mean, not directly of sacrifice. But, but there's harm. There's harm that's going to come to the seed of the woman. Yeah, he shall bruise her and you shall bruise his heel. So yeah. there's harm that's going to happen. Yeah. We're not told exactly what that harm is there. But when you infer the rest of the, of the scripture, I mean, it's very clear that that's what was being spoken of from the very beginning, mm-hmm. right? That that there's going to be harm that comes to the seed of woman, who is Jesus Christ, the second Adam. Give me one second. I'm going to try to find another scripture for you real quick. I'm looking at the, the Jeremiah 7 real quick. Hold on. But but real quick, back in uh, Genesis chapter 3, you ask, where does the sacrifice come from? Well, again, that comes from Genesis chapter 3, where it says um, in verse 6, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desirable to make one wise... She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. So the first religion, really Gary, the first religion comes from the covering of the human body with fig leaves. But with your own sin, yeah. With Trying own. to cover your own sin. Yes. So then what happens? In verse 8, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden of the cool of the day, which is awesome, by the way. I wish I got to walk in the cool of the day with with God. Um, And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Verse 9, Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. And I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave me to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle and more than the beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. Verse 15, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. uh, He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. And then he goes on to explain the curses to the woman and to the man. But then God does something special. It says in verse 21, Also, for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. So what do we see with the sacrifice of the first animals? We see the covering of man and their nakedness. Why was there sacrifice in the beginning, the first sacrifice? It was to cover the sin of man. Interesting. Let's look that up real quick. So 
In verse 21 says, for also Adam and his wife, the, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. What kind of skin? <laughs> yeah, it's got to be death. It's got to be death. Yeah, it actually says, dude. Because uh, here's the thing: he's forgetting about the the commandment that God gave Adam and Eve. Yeah. If you eat of the if you eat out of the tree of good of knowledge of, of um, the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. Yeah. Yeah. That's the penalty. Yeah. Dude, if God said it, it's going to happen. Absolutely. So from the very beginning, God has said, "Dude, if you eat, you, you so there has to be death." And this is the whole gospel message, right? Yes. So this is the thing we we see that God told Adam, Adam and Eve, "Hey, just don't eat of this tree. There's the tree of of life right over here. Eat of that tree, but don't eat of this tree. It's the tree of death or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? And in doing so, in dying, you surely shall die. That's how it's written." Right? Well, what does that mean? We're well, not going to die physically, and we know that because we read it and they don't die physically, but they die spiritually, right? So we also read, like you read in Revelation, that Jesus Christ was crucified from the foundations of the earth, which means God had already created the plan of redemption. So he knew what Adam and Eve were going to do before they did it because he's all knowing, he's outside of time and space, he knew what was going to happen, but and, and you may ask, well, well, why would God ever create that system? Mm. What's for love? Without a choice, there is no love. So in order for God's creation to love him. Why would God create that system? Let's stop right there. Because I think that's what he, he has an issue with. It's, it's for love. If, we're, but we're real quick, we're real quick. Let's kind of more, more on a more practical level. Uh-huh. Right? For me, it's literally God said, you do this, you shall surely die. Mm-hmm. That's the penalty. Yeah, there has to be death. Yeah, and I think the sacrifice is a constant reminder of the death, of the death, yeah. of the consequences of sin. Yeah, amen. It's the constant reminder that we are sinners. Yeah, absolutely. And. Obviously, the story doesn't end there. No. And that's where love comes in. That's where love comes in. He covered them with the skins. Yes. The same way he covers us with the blood of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And we are redeemed. And we are no longer sinners in the eyes of God. When God looks upon us now, all he sees is his son, Jesus Christ. We are redeemed. And you know what? What's crazy to me, and this is a concept that I, I go, I struggle with back and forth. If Jesus Christ was crucified from the foundations of, of the earth, and if I was seen in his eyes to be saved, he, he's created works for me to walk in from the yes, foundations of the we earth. we were just talking about that. That means that I've been redeemed from the foundations of the earth. Yes, that's biblical. So, so this is this is Romans, so, bro. Romans eight eight twenty nine. So, so, so even before the Son of Man, God knew that I was gonna need, I was gonna need a redemption plan, and He provided it to me as His Son. Wow, that's the love of God. You know, when when a man presents God as creating a system and using something that was evil, like the evil of sacrifice the sacrifice of a human to Molech. It's missing the whole point. Mm. The point is, God knew the propensity of sin in humanity and created a redemption plan for that. That's how much he loves us. That he would be that would he that he would give his only begotten son. And and you know he presents it as just his son. We gotta remember Jesus Christ is the third person in the The, Trinity. Amen, bro. Like He's God incarnate. Amen. He willingly came and died. Listen. For us. Ch- check this out. You can't be Lord without being God. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You cannot be Lord, King of Kings, yeah. Lord of Lords, without being God. Yeah. 
who else can carry the burdens of that sin? Think about it. All the sins of humanity, every single sin, who can bear all that pressure? No one. But God. But God. Yeah, in fact, you know, in the book of Revelation, it's funny, we read that uh, John starts to cry because... No one could open the seal. No one could open the seals. And then he sees the lamb Mm. who was marked for slaughter, right? And it was Jesus Christ who could open the seals because he is righteous and he has redeemed the world from sin. Wow. That's powerful. Powerful, man. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and look, I, I don't know him. I don't know him, obviously. And I'm only commenting on what I'm hearing from this video. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to come across, oh, he's a false teacher, all this. I know people are saying that, but you know how I, I treat that. I want to be wise and I want to, I don't want to, yeah, yeah. I don't want to judge yeah. the guy because obviously he's talking about those kind of people. Yeah, yeah. But I have a question for you. Sure. If you were to stand in front of a council in the early church fathers, <laughs> what would they have said? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. They're probably there's no there's no council today. There, there would have been some harsh words. I'm, I'm just yeah, being real. It just you know yeah I get it. For, yeah. And look I get it 100. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I heard enough though. Oh yeah no I'm good. Let's move on to something funny, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard enough. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I got, yeah, I wanted to dissect Jeremiah 